Hey, do you like cute stickers and adorable cat pins and prints? Then you should check out my shop, like right now, before it's too late. Link is in the description box below. Thank you! We have a scrawler box, so let's open it. This one is the September box. I also have the August box. But I've got the art supplies spoiled for me, and I'm not really into the stuff inside. So I figured let's just jump straight to the September one, which I don't know what's inside. So let's check it out. Everything seemed to have escaped the tissue paper package. So let's just grab things and see what they are. Oh, I like these ones. The Pit Artist Pen Dual Markers. I think the ones that I have are just regular, yes, one tipped markers. So these are new to me. We got a box inside the box. Got a little booklet and the actual pens. Want them all to be facing the right direction. Oh, that is a thick brush tip. At the other end, we got a little fine liner tip. A very thick fine liner nib, 0.8 millimeter. I've been using these Pit Artist pens for many years, but something that I actually didn't know about them. These are India ink markers. So even if they are water-based, the ink becomes permanent once they dry, so that is good to know. And we got an eraser. It looks slightly transparent. This soft eraser lifts graphite particles off the paper with ease. Well, I think that describes every single eraser though. Maybe not every eraser, because some erasers are just crap. A good eraser should lift the graphite particles off the paper. We got a graphite pencil and we got a sticker. Very cute. Oh, there is a person on there. And we got a very, very long <laughs> candy. A sour one, unfortunately. We got the scrawler scene with a bunch of handy information about the art supplies and also information about the artist. Now we have the featured artist and their art. Wow, this dude is looking at some butts. Do I need to censor this? Also, we got boobs. Besides that the guys seem very fishy, I do love the art style. It is so whimsical and colorful and I love all the different texture. This art is made by T. Eurisic, if I'm not pronouncing that totally wrong. And this is where you can find their art. Art. And then lastly we got Frisk cartridge paper. Got a little bit of a texture to it. What I would call like a nice drawing paper. Oh, also, oh, that is interesting. Fascinating folklore. That can be interesting looking up some folklore from the north. But let's start by trying out these art supplies. A little more red than I thought it would be, but very juicy and pigmented. I love this brush tip. I do actually really like the, the color scheme here. And of course we have the pencil. I think we better try out the eraser too. Not super impressed to be totally honest. Leaving a lot of eraser dust and also I can still see the graphite. Let's dive deep down into the Scandinavian, Nordic, a Swedish folklore. I do know that we got a lot of trolls and elves and also these little Santa Claus looking people, Tomtenisar, like these ones, they're very cute. We got Bekkahesten, which is a horse that drags children down into the water. And also Necken, that is a nude dude <laughs> that is sitting in the middle of a brook or stream or something, luring people down into the water as well. I think we got a lot of those stories to prevent children or people from drowning in the good old days. So yeah, there are a bunch of creatures to choose from. Enough talking, let's just get into it. So I was looking for some inspiration online for Swedish folklore and a lot of drawings of trolls came up, especially from a certain Swedish artist named Jon Bauer. He's famous for his paintings of trolls, among other things, often a little darker and gloomier, but still somehow cheerful, but a little more dark and mysterious. Then I came to think of another Swedish artist that is also very famous for their trolls and whose illustrations I grew up 
up with all lead by his illustrations are more colorful and warm i had an art print of one of his paintings hanging above my bed when i was little and i saw his illustrations in children's books i just love how full of life and detail his work is so being inspired by these two great artists i will draw a troll today it's not what i usually draw so i thought it could be fun so as usual i start by making a sketch in procreate and this is just one of those sketches that was a pleasure to make i've started to enjoy this process so much more ever since i switched over to digital sketching i love the freedom of moving things around and being able to mirror the image and refine the sketch more easily without having to erase a lot and destroy the paper and i love how this sketch turned out i'm so pleased with it the pointy ears with a little curl at the end it is something that i saw in bauer's illustrations and i thought it looked so cute so this lady has found herself a cozy spot between the mossy rocks in the forest maybe she's just taking a nap or maybe she will stay there over the winter who knows i want it to look peaceful and calm so my idea from the beginning when seeing the art supplies and the featured art was to use a lot of bold colors and heavy line art but I felt like I wanted to use a little more muted color tones, a little more delicate detailed art style so I cheated a little. Well, it's technically not cheating since I'm still using the art supplies in the box, but I use the pens as watercolors or liquid ink since they are actually based on India ink. So I scribble with the pens on a paint palette, mix them with water and paint them on. You have seen this before. This is what I do when I have water-based pens that I don't know what to do with. And maybe I should have challenged myself and gone with a bold color but you know what this art was born in my heart and soul and it needed to be made as it was intended this way I could go with the softer colors that I wanted I could mix skin tones and different greens for the surrounding nature and also gray for the stones and just a bunch of softer color tones and I'm very happy that I made that decision <laughs> So trolls then, trolls has been a part of the Norse mythology since the Viking age and I think each country has their own versions but here they are known for being very strong and big like giants and they lived in these huge mountain halls underground where they kept all their gold because even if they are mainly wearing rags for clothes, trolls are apparently rich on gold so they are often wearing these fancy jewelries. There are stories about changelings where a human child is said to have been switched out with a child of a troll for some reason. Trolls were also known for being shapeshifters so that is why it was so hard for people to spot them but if you could feel the smell of tobacco that could be a troll so not a good time to be a smoker. And the sound of church bells were used to scare them off and before that it was Thor and his hammer that kept them away and if you were going out in the woods it was good carrying a silver knife because trolls are afraid of silver. Some trolls could even be turned into stone when being hit by sunlight so yeah there are many different tales and stories then of course over the years and in more modern times when we're not really believing in trolls anymore they have become more cute and friendly especially when featured in children's books and in tv shows so let me know what famous folklore do you have in your country leave me a comment below The pens worked really well to paint with and since the ink dries permanent I didn't have to worry about the paint lifting up again when doing multiple layers. When looking at the painting now afterwards I wish I would have pushed the contrast a little further, maybe doing more shading and such but it was hard to make darker tones with the colors that I had to work with even if the brown was very dark but my intention was also to create a softer kind of artwork 
work, so I think I succeeded at that anyway. Something that I've been seeing in different illustrations of mythical forest creatures and characters is long and flowy hair. So I gave my troll lady this white long hair that is spread out around her on the rocks and the ground. I left the hair all white without any coloring or shading like negative space to make it even more magical or mysterious mythical. I'm not sure what kind of cloak she's wearing though. I was thinking some kind of fur maybe, but I don't know. I think though that they kind of want to blend into the surroundings, so maybe it is made out of different nature materials. My initial plan was to do the line work using the fine tip of the pens, but the brown that I was planning to use is very, very dark and I was worried that the lines would be too bold, so I decided to scrap that idea and instead I mixed blue and red with a little bit of brown and I got this brownish purple color that I then added with a fine paintbrush. In that way I could do finer lines than if I had used a fine liner nib that was pretty thick. I really like the soft line work, it is just what this piece needed to bring it together. I am so, so very happy with how this painting turned out, it is definitely my favorite artwork in a while, it is nothing that I would normally draw so it was a fun experience. I do love drawing mysterious creatures and nature scenes so I should really draw these kinds of things more often. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and the art. I will put this in my Redbubble store along with a bunch of other artwork that I will update the store with. Thanks Scrawlerbox for the art supplies and thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time. Keep drawing my happy cats. Bye!